Good evening, Truck and SUV fans! How was that for an intro? <laughs> Alright, so check it out. You guys are already blowing up the chat. I am trying my best to keep up. Just had to finish some yummy fish for dinner and uh, ate a uh, really good dinner, so I'm excited about that. Um, and I brought. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> all right, so we're doing that. We got uh, Bronco news. We got all sorts of crazy news going on. And I see I'm delayed. And come on. Come on, screen. You can start talking in time now. So I, I guess I'm going to... Oh, there we go. Oh, about 30 seconds late. So maybe I got to trim that intro a little bit. But uh, we will try something on that later. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get you guys to see what screen. Okay, so we're going to do it like this. If you have not seen the Ford Bronco yet, which I'm guessing by the comments and stuff going on, you have, um, I should do some photos of it. So hold on, let me create the Ford Bronco. i got to create a screen. i got to add an image. Uh, image. And um, Ford. I'm going to do the, the two-door, because the two-door is, I don't know, two-door or four-door. I haven't decided which one's my favorite. Uh, but I'm pretty damn excited. So it's it's working. It's just technology, uh, technology. All right. So there is the two door, and uh, da da da. So I'm gonna put this on the screen with the big juggernaut thing they put on there. Boom! Look at that. So I I'm gonna do that for I'll go four door, uh, four door. That's what I'm doing. Four door, and you guys can tell me how disappointed you are that that doesn't have a V8 engine. Okay. All right. Four. So four. So let's go back here. Come on. Um. Do 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 do. I know Mr. David Boyd is watching this from Nissan Nation podcast. Mr. David Boyd, this is called OBS software. That's what that's called. OBS software. You can transition. You can go. Didink. <coughs> Didink. Yes. Look at that. Ford or Bronco on the thing, and then you can go back to your photo of yourself, your camera, and you go, oh, over here, guys, over here. Yeah, see, ah, that's how that works. All right, so uh, that is the really cool uh, Ford. All right. <laughs> Cora Daddy is here. This is internet slower than a turtle walking through peanut butter. But yeah, I'm with you. That's funny. All right, I'm a little red tonight, and it's, I haven't drank the whiskey yet. I'm a little red. Um, I uh, was on vacation last week in Florida, and I was playing golf in Florida, and I played golf today. And, um, yeah, this is my outdoor look. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on. All right, so, uh, but it looks it looks better with this camera lighting. I have my selfie light going on. I got my track lighting going on. Yeah, but some of the video stuff, it looks like I'm really red. All right. Okay, so there we have there we have the Bronco. It was a huge day today. I did three videos plus this video is four. Yes, I can still do math, and uh, just a lot going on today. A lot of energy going on. Ford's PR team was uh, busy, and I don't think these were. Uh, they may have been leaks that they wanted to put out. I don't know, but it lots of going on. You guys have been awesome, blowing up the channel. The the views have been outstanding off noon. And so, yeah, it is uh, exciting. All right, so uh, let's see. We talked about the Ford Bronco. I'm going to get your thoughts on that. Some of you, the comments right now I've been reading are, it looks like International Scout, which I totally get. It's uh, I can see that look quite a bit. And um, some of the people saying that the Sport, which I didn't do photos of the Sport, but the Sport's a different video. But it was going to do, the Sport looked like a Land Rover. So thoughts there. Uh, yeah, so lots of lots of going on. So let's start. Let's. I'm kind of keeping up. You guys kind of blew up the chat on me here, and you got me uh, behind. Uh, ten speed auto and three liter power stroke. Oh, wow. I don't think the three liter power stroke is selling that well, and I don't think they can move it on beyond the beyond the Ford F one fifty. I actually speculate the twenty twenty one model year of the new F one fifty. I don't know. I don't know if the, I don't know if the power stroke sticks around. But here's a here's the thing for you, Henry. When I was doing the video, I was thinking, okay, this is a 10 point, or a 10, a 2.3 liter uh, inline four cylinder, right? I was thinking, this is like legitimately the cheapest engine I could put in this thing, and literally it's going to have a spot that says, remove and swap engine here, right? That 
Bronco is going to be engine swapped like crazy. Anybody who's going to buy it, like an enthusiast, is going to swap engines immediately. So that's what I think. I think it's going to be swapped immediately. I don't think the, the transmission or the engine make any sense at all. I mean, why wouldn't you want something more powerful? It sounds better. Make, makes sense to me. But yeah, I think it's going to be swapped in crazy. It's going to be an immediate swap. But I do think there's going to be a Bronco R Racing prototype that will have the high output 3.5 liter uh, EcoBoost. I just saw this. Sorry, there was tons of stuff going on. Um, yeah, so that that's... Alright, so there we go. Yes, Bronco's going on. It needs a V8 sound. Headlights look like short shoes. Absolutely. Ooh. I'm getting text messages. Uh, Alright. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, they do. But I like the Bronco spelled out. They're pretty badass. Juan says, Motor Trend and Motor One dot com are saying that four doors big Bronco is Photoshop because of where the windshield is. What do you think, Tim? Let's take a look. Come on, computer. Okay, my computer doesn't want to go take a look. Oh, here it goes. Come on. I have an old Mac. Thanks, Dave, from the Nissan Nation Podcast, donating five bucks. That's going into my Mac fund. Yeah. All right. Because uh, of the windshield. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm nitpicky. I mean, to me, that's the shape of it. We know that from the ra racing prototype. It basically is, looks like the racing prototype without all the... The, the graphics on it, so I don't think it's that photoshopped. I did see one where the hood was down, and I saw another one where the hood was up. So it could have been photoshopped. Or maybe I didn't. I was playing golf this afternoon. Lots of thoughts came in my head that weren't involved in the Ford Bronco. I was making birdies. I was dropping haymakers on the green making birdies. Um, Jesse Simpson says, I still wish it had solid front axle. It looks good regardless. I think it's the independent front suspension. With that lower that lower control arm, it said independent front suspension to me, but I've been wrong on suspension stuff in the past. I will be wrong in the future on suspension stuff, so yeah, let me know. Uh, someone will find a way to do solid, rear, solid axles. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that thing's going to be modified. Basically, Ford is building the interior and the exterior. The rest is going to be completely modified. Uh, Hammer right to independent front suspension. Bronco leak was Ford trying to save their stock. Ooh, John asked the deep questions. Well, John, let's see. Um, so if I were to speculate here, I'd say there's a lot going on with the Ford Bronco leak. I would say a couple things. Number one, um, Ford doesn't really leak stuff very often, so that's kind of strange. Uh, number two, the Bronco's supposed to be unveiled sometime this month, and nobody has information on it yet. I talked to my colleagues yesterday. Nobody has any invites for, that, for the unveiling. Uh, number three, coronavirus going around. So I, there's a lot of speculation I've been putting out there about industry changing. So this week, Cadillac, Buick, and Chevy canceled press trips. I had a press trip going on Thursday. It got canceled. Uh, Honda did theirs, and Hyundai is doing theirs as well. I think the Tucson and the Honda something are going on this week. So everybody's playing different games. Uh, Geneva Auto Show got canceled. Uh, New York Auto Show is kind of up in the air. So if you want to build up some news... You may leak some photos ahead of the, the reveal, which could just be a YouTube live stream at this point. Excuse me. It really could, because there's all these questions about when is it going to come out and who's going to see it. And with the coronavirus going on, uh, journalists and big groups is a problem right now. So, I don't know. I, have, I, I It's interesting theory about was it deliberate. And we'll find out in a few years to come. Uh, Ford, just tell me where to send the check. It's sold on four door. I'm with you, Stevio. I'm with you big time. H2, limited articulation, though. Yeah, it's true. I don't have Super Chat here in Puerto Rico. Oh, sorry. Power Stroke Bronco versus Equal Diesel Wrangler. That would be a matchup. That'd be a really cool matchup. Hey, 10 bucks from Jeff. Hey, thanks, buddy. Uh, gonna keep my whiskey fun warm. Uh, gonna keep me, yeah. Yeah, it's competition now. It's really cool. I'm kind of excited about that. I was really jealous of uh, Nissan Nation podcast. Jeff's, he had a live stream last night. His super chat was off the hook. I was like, what the hell? I like Port Order, a pass on a two-door. I don't know, Maverick Cruz. Hey, uh, my wife, thank you for your comments. Um, I, I, the two-door looks pretty cool. I, I think I'm going to dig the two-door, too. Uh, just because that short wheelbase can be huge for off-roading. 
The four door is gonna still do a good job, but it's not gonna be as cool as the two door is gonna be. I just can't wait to see them all and touch them and like put my hand on them and yeah. Oh, yeah, with the uh, with the the uh, conversion rate, yeah. Headlights kind of look like a renegade. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. We know, of course, Ray will get the Bronco with a Barra. You know, Barra. I, I, somebody said that word to me, and I haven't looked it up. Uh, the guy's just pissed they didn't get the picks first. <laughs> Fourteen ninety nine from Doug. Thanks, Doug. How's the last treat you there, buddy? I still gotta get up there. Beautiful part of the country. I have yet to make it up there. That's the one state I want to go to. Um, they have a U.S. Open qualifying up there. I've been thinking about doing that. Something ridiculous. Yes. Something ridiculous. If I can get my handicap down. All right. Is it the uh, independent front suspension in solid rear? That is. That's what I guess it is. Uh, we'll jump to the lake if it's a solid axle. <laughs> Tim, I hope the Rock video goes by and make your channel blow up the subscribers. It is blowing up right now. It's You guys are killing it. Let me. Oh. Thanks, Juan. Great journalist. I uh, I do my best. All right, so uh, let's see. Um, oh, the wife's texting me. Speaking of that, Maverick Cruz. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's boom. <laughs> it's going crazy. I, you know, I will say this though. I was on vacation last week, and so that's why you guys saw all the reviews. I actually did a good job. I got all my reviews ready to go before I left, and so they just hit every day. And I responded to comments when I could, but. Um, I'm really happy, really happy, I wasn't on vacation today <laughs> and this week. That would have been a pain in the ass. Shooting all the stuff on my phone. I may have to use an iMovie or something to edit it because I bring my laptop with me. So, dodged a bullet there. All right. Picks up showing underpinning. Yeah, I, 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 I tried to find pics that showed the underpinning in my video, but there's so many, so many stuff going on today. I, just, I had to go with what I had. Uh, Juke says, I'm always on the Bronco 6G forums. Guys from Ford there are strongly hinting lots of options to play their one when the independent front suspension comes up. Hmm. So, that'd be interesting to do a solid front axle and an independent front suspension. That'd be a lot of money in engineering and build. I think it's got that, um, it probably has that truck control, which is going to be uh, like crop control for the Tacoma and. I'd imagine that's going to appease some of the off-roaders if it has that feature. Hmm. Hmm. Good insight as always, Juke. Joke. Juke. Juke. If the 7 speed is an option, they better not limit it to the base engine. I, I don't know what you do with this, those uh, manual transmissions. It'll be interesting because Jeep has one. Tacoma has one. Uh, that's about it. And so I imagine they can offer it throughout because they're trying to get some people to buy them because manuals don't sell it all. Your, your voice is echoing. Why is my voice echoing? I'll move my, this is my, this is my snowball. Um, it's my microphone. Now I'll try to sit, instead of doing this, I'll try to sit more uh, there. Me too. So sorry about that. I like the tutorial because of nostalgia 1966-77. Agreed. I want one. Take my mind. Agreed. Oh, there it is. Bar is inline six. The four liter Aussie two J Z. Oh yeah, yeah. Now that makes sense. Tim, is independent front suspension bad? People are saying you can't rock climb like a Jeep Rubicon. I'm ready to use independent front suspension. I think it was good. Yeah. There's always this debate about front, solid front axle, and independent front suspension. Uh, it's been going on for years. Chevy trucks have always been independent front suspension. And it's always been a discussion point there as far as towing things. A discussion point off-road. I've read a bunch on this, the four-wheeler and Jeep magazine stuff. And it basically is all a wash. It just depends on how you, how you want to build your truck, what you like versus the other one, and how you plan on uh, off-roading. Some enthusiasts love soft front axles because... They're really easy to modify. You can lift it. You can you can add spacers, tires, and that's really easy. Independent front suspension, you can do that stuff, but it's a lot more difficult because you have more uh, geometry going on and more parts. But I've never I've never had any problems. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, David says, there's just a lot. You can, I mean, people have different likes and dislikes, but I've never seen a problem with it. Can't wait to see how my new Tacoma TRD Pro handles the trails. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, Jeff, if you haven't been to Karate Motorsports, has a Tacoma, and he's really doing some interesting videos on a Ram uh, 1500 work truck with a 3 liter. A little echoey. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to fix that. Uh, Echo is OBS. Uh, I don't think it's OBS. No death wobble on independent dimensions. That's true. I hope Tacoma manuals on chopping block next generation. Um, it's always going to be a point of com conversation. What's interesting with that... Oh, thank... Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's... I'm just going to try to sit right here. I'm just trying not to move. Um, I was talking to Toad about that, and the manual sells really well in the northeast part of the country. And I've talked to people in the northeast part of the country who can't tell me why the Tacoma sells well up there, and they don't really realize it sells well up there. So it's weird. And I, uh, I did... I did drive that uh, Tacoma with the manual. It's okay. But we did off-roading with it. It was a very complicated kind of drive. So it does okay. I, I'm not sure that Toyota's going to do a lot with keeping that around. But, you know, honestly, I, I should back that up because, honestly, they're adding more capacity. And if you add more capacity to the plant, that means you have more opportunity for more options, which would mean it would stay around. Especially the Mexico plant, which I want to go visit, but... The coronavirus is kind of killing my plans. Hmm. Damn virus. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I know enough about suspension to get me dangerous. So, that is what's going on. Oh, I think I got all caught up. You guys were killing it trying to get me uh, caught up here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why the East Coast does manual transmission so well, so much. You think with the, the traffic out there, especially around the cities, you wouldn't want that manual transmission, but... Mm. Mm. Real question is, we will get a Raptor variant. I think we will get... Hmm. It seems like I want to say yes. Normally, Henry, I'd say no. But I seem like I want to say yes because of that Bronco Racing R prototype. They're already building a racing prototype of one. So it seems like if they're already planning to go down that road, why wouldn't they do a Raptor version of it? Makes sense to me. Uh, but it seems like if you do that, why not do a Raptor and make more money? Good business decision. All right. Uh, can I lift the independent front suspension like 6 inches left and 40 inches left? Uh, you can, but you need new control arms. You actually snap them. My friends have been showing me uh, videos of uh, Chevy heavy-duty trucks that uh, are pulling at a uh, almost one of those redneck pulling tractor pulling events. And they're snapping the control arms, and they snap because, and they just snap and go, and they, literally the wheels go. <laughs> it's pretty funny to watch, but um, yeah, I think if you lift put that much weight on it, you're gonna snap those control arms. Oh, <laughs> David, hook me up another two bucks. Wow, buddy, super cash. Um, yeah, so I live in Nebraska, Western Nebraska, in the farm country, and there's no strippers out here that I know of. Uh, maybe farmers only. <laughs> I don't I don't know much about that. All right, Jim Curtis asks, is the consensus that the new Bronco is underwhelming? Hmm. I don't know. I kind of liked it. I like the look of it. Uh, do I think the powertrain is underwhelming? Yes. But I don't think it's meant... I think people are going to swap that engine out completely anyways. Interestingly, what do you guys think? You should guys... I could create a... I used to be able to create a poll. I'm going to create a poll. No, I can't create a poll, but I was going to, I don't know. Oh, participants. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah, let me know. What do you guys think? Is it underwhelming? If they do a Raptor Bronco, they need to go back and do a Raptor Ranger. They have a Raptor Ranger. Sold in Europe. Sold in Australia. So there is such a thing as a Raptor Ranger that we don't get in the United States. There is the Raptor F-150. Not really the same truck. They're completely different trucks. But there is such a thing as the, um, they could do a Raptor Bronco. It seems like if you have that much name recognition of the Raptor, why not make it multiple things? It's like it's like the Denali with GMC, right? There's the Yukon, Acadia, Terrain, a uh, Sierra. So why not use that same name throughout your lineup and Raptor everything? It's all money. It's all profit. Bronco R didn't win the race like the Raptor. Ooh. John pointing that out. I agree. But uh, they had some difficulties. What did they break down a couple times? Or they they broke something. I say they broke. I had a friend who was on that drive, and I think they broke something. Uh, da -da -da -da. Stripper farmers. I hope they are not. Their girls not men. Hmm. 
No comment. <laughs> All right. T16 says, I like it. I'm a Nissan guy and love it. All right. So you guys are, are live in that. Uh, I don't know. Why? It's it's profit. I mean, if you're Ford and you're trying to get a stock price up, you want to make more profit. Makes sense to me. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get rid of some of these warnings. All right. Good. All right. Because my computer's like, oh, my God, you're killing it. Jeez, all these comments. I like 500 comments this, this, today. All right. Well, what was I going to talk about next? Can't wait to say the Grand Wagon or Trackhawk. I think so. It could cheap, cheapen the Raptor name. Hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, for the rap Broncos, the jury is still out. I want to see more colors, options, etc. So far, I'm the warm on it. Oh, I think that color is pretty cool. What kind of trim levels were they having a Bronco Sport? I think you're... Well, it'd be the... Uh, they do the XLT. You're going to have that for sure. Uh, do they do... I don't think I have a Lariat. It's, it's going to be the same as the Explorer. Explorer and Escape. So I think you can see the Explorer and Escape will be the same trim levels as the Bronco Sport. The Bronco Sport to me is just going to be a bigger, cooler looking version of the Bronco uh, Ford Escape. Their trim levels escape me. I don't always have. I don't have Ford memorized as well as I do other brands. Uh, Henry, oh yeah, sorry. There are no, there's no really any details on trim levels. Sorry guys. I'm just uh, King Ranch or Platinum. I don't, I don't think. I don't think a King Ranch Bronco makes any sense. I think a Platinum does, but do you see a Bronco as being a farmer kind of southwestern trim on it? Hmm. All right, it will beat Ford, Chevy, and GMC. So it says, Tim, what do you think the pricing will be? 40K to 70K? Yeah, I think in that range. So, you know, especially for the Bronco, the Bronco Sport will probably be 28 to 37. And then you go for Bron Bronco 40 to 70, probably 70 in the top racing trim. I think I fell flat for me when I see them sitting on a factory shop floor. On the popless octane filled guys play, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with um, the real photos. I mean, these are like leaked photos, and so I don't know what the real photos are going to be like. I, I assume they're going to be pretty cool. All right, can't wait to see the grand I thought you said the grand wagon or trackhawk. Oh, once said twice. Will U.S. truck sales not fall behind as much as car sales because the truck crash mostly being here because of the coronavirus? Uh, yeah, unless something happens in Mexico. So I said this, I was talking to my golf pro today, and we were talking about this, and I said, uh, you know, if as long as Mexico's okay, I think you won't see any disruption in truck sales. And what I mean by that, and let me be very clear what I mean by that, is a lot of parts come from Mexico. And so if the part suppliers have to close their businesses, then you see major disruptions in truck sales. Um, so that's the thing to watch for, is watch for like a little bit of Canada, but mostly Mexico. If Mexico gets quarantined like did Italy, or like Japan, they sent kids home from school, or China, um, you have a lot of disruption in the parts. And if you don't have any parts, you can't finish your trucks. So I don't think so at this point, but I'm going to keep, you know, keep an eye on that. Uh, John, any plans to review the F-250 Kramer? Actually, I do. Uh, let's see. Hey, Brandon. Uh, let me look at my calendar and see what's upcoming. So, this week I have the 2020 Honda pa or Hyundai Palisade. I get a Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro and and I get a um, Ram 3500 Dually one ton. Next week will be a busy week for me. I will be at the farm. It's called uh, tearing down the old hot dog room of the truck. So, home improvement week. At pickup truck plus SUV talk next week, so I'll have those two trucks at that, that same time. So the forerunner I've driven a bunch. I need to get to some video of it and do a walk around, drive around a little bit. So that's, I probably won't spend that much time forerunner. I'll just do what's new. The Ram one ton. <laughs> we put some miles on that review. So I get that, and then uh, let's see, April seventh, April seventh for John. I have an F two fifty, and I believe that is the Tremor. I think that term will be here April 7th. So it goes uh, 400, then I have a, a blank, but I think I had I had an email with a calendar. I had Ford Expedition and Ford Ranger replacement, because they, they pulled a Ford Ranger for me. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Toyota Tundra TRD Pro Crew Max. 
Acura RDX, and Lexus NX 300 F Sport. So I'm going to be doubled up for a little while. But I don't travel anywhere until the 24th to the 26th. So I'll have doubled up on press loans, but that's okay because I have to do some stories. Because with the travel getting killed with coronavirus, I need more content. So yeah, so that's what's going on there. That's my calendar. And I'm going, like I said, and if you know this, I'm going to Texas and the tour to headquarters. And I'm going to see a man about a Dodge truck. Now, I usually would correct people when I say Bram or Dodge. This guy actually owns a Dodge. And I'm, I'm going to visit this guy, and uh, he has his, he's on his third Cummins engine. So that's going to get you fired up. He's got 1.4 million miles on it. So that'll be a really interesting video. I can't remember that. I told, I told people that. I said, that video is be like throwing dynamite at the gold mine. <laughs> when that thing goes live... It, <laughs> It clicked, you're going to go like crazy. I think the view time is going to be awesome on that. So, yeah, so that, that's the plans. Eddie Bauer Bronco. Oh, that was a cool one. Uh, Eddie Bauer Bronco. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, King Ranch Bronco solid axle with a baby power truck would be country guy. <laughs> it, it definitely would, Henry. I don't know. It, I, don't, I don't know if I can see a King Ranch Bronco. That'd be interesting. I don't see how it's done. I don't know if there's much. I, I would imagine so. Hmm. That's a good one. Let's go out with a limited Bronco. Ram will be a great review. Can you tell that Hay Hall Taylor gave the 3500? Oh, uh, yeah, I can go. Um, I'm hauling cars and I'm hauling some some wood and stuff. I have a trailer. I, I hold on. I will see if I have um, if I have some time. I, that guy is. I can go find him. I need maybe actually I need his loader for something. Hmm. Good question. I will go see if I can find him. Uh, yeah, Aaron has a loader right now, John. Yep. 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 It's, it's coming to me next. Audio is echoing again. Golly. What's wrong with my audio? Stupid thing. thing. Is, is this even on? on? Sorry, guys. Um, that sucks. Audio is bad. Let's see. What about the multifunction nugget is not available in heavy duties? Brandon brought up a good point last week on vacation that... The GMC has expanded the tailgate along all their trim levels for GMC trucks. Uh, heavy duty, I wonder, I mean, that's a good one. I don't know about that one. All right, let me, uh, let me, let me know if you, uh, if the audio is fixed. I don't know if I, I don't know what I keep doing. Uh, 47, you like the Ranger? Yeah, I thought we said that. Yeah, I need to do a video on that. I, I guys. Uh, my, my day, day got destroyed. destroyed. I have videos like crazy going out. The one I wanted, the one I did was the Jeep Gladiator getting the, the frame bent, and the Bronco just cannibalized all those views. Uh, Ford F fifty platinum tremor truck camper. I think would be cool. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me guess. You're reviewing the Dodge Ram that the Boss Garage did an engine swap on. No, I'm not. This is a different guy. I have looked at. I've looked at the Bosses, and the Bosses. He's outside of. Um, Toronto, and I've done the flight times like that. Uh, he's on my list. He's kind of one of those guys kind of hanging on the bottom of my list. So I'm not quite sure I can make it there. But I happen to have a connection in Texas, so I'm going down to do that thing in Texas. It's, uh, I want to roll that more trims. Uh, Joel wants to know when does Ford F-150 come out? And come out is gas or electric? Which one? There was some speculation on this I saw today, and nobody really knows. Some magazines have tried to find out. And nobody really knows what the answer is. So maybe I can turn my audio up. Let me really know. Oh, that made it there. So nobody really knows what's coming out. I would expect it to come out the third quarter. So sometime like August through October. Uh, I would expect that truck to be. So, so you go Bronco, baby Bronco, do those media drives. Then you do F-150 in, in the fall. That makes sense to me. Okay. God, I can't stand this audio echoing. It's really pissing me off. <sighs> Tim, forget King Ranch. Let's call it limited Bronco. Uh, Brandon wants to know, you think the frame of the Gladiator is too weak in the factory? It's Wrangler-based, not Ram-based. So I reached out to a competitor engineer, and I shared my video, and I asked him, and uh, I can read his answer. I'll read his answer. You guys want to read it? I'll read his answer. Uh, let's see. His, His answer, answer is. Let me find, find it. it. Hold on. on. Okay. So, so his, his answer, answer is. 
He says, says, I can't imagine shocks, shocks to blame, but FCA is going to avoid the warranty claim due to aftermarket shocks. Shocks, even if too long, could dampen the input force during compression. If the shock does fully limit travel or shock fade occurs due to internal oil temps, then you get into bump stops, full compression of suspension. This may have happened, but the frame damage is not the direct reaction to full compression. He says, I guess one of two things happened. Number one, the driver was traveling too fast and bottomed the suspension. The truck went from full compression to the full rebound, but the travel inertia was still traveling downward and overloaded the frame. The deck can X can separation is a trigger for the frame. This is explaining the bending down the frame. Or number two, the driver caught air in the truck and loaded the rear end with trailer mass. Basically overloaded the frame in a cantilever way. Cantilever way. The trigger again is a separation between the deck and the cab. The frame is designed to simply support payload, but the cantilever load the frame, then bad things happen. Box frames, a rigid and more provide more structure when loading in certain directions but yield when overloaded. This is why class 5 to 8 trucks have an open C-section law of more traditional movement or compliancy. On another note, a standard 2-inch ball hitch is totally incorrect for off-roading a trailer. This type of trailer should have a pencil or a rock and roll hitch. This prevents twisting and overloading. It would be interesting to see the receiver on this truck. I am sure it is well under the frame, but I can't remember how frame up the rear side member it goes. Bottom line is, this guy told a $56,000 vehicle he better have good insurance. You ask who's liable? The owner. The guy who was driving. There you go. There is the answer. I thought that was a pretty interesting answer. Hey, David, you know, to David. Uh, Ram between their base, uh, poor Jeep gets its back broken and Bronco steals the thunder. <laughs> Electric F 150 won't come out until 2023, same time as a Cybertruck. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. New F 150 out this fall, gas version, electric will be a while. And I, yeah, I think 2023 makes sense. Rough Country lifts frame is based off, not a fan of Rough Country, yeah. Z1 off road where he's been going. Check out Kendallman air suspension lifts. The exact same standard as Chevy Colorado split when towing off road. It is, it is, and so I thought that answer was very interesting, and he basically said the same thing for the Colorado. Um, I remember asking him about that question too. So, there you go. There is the uh, answers to those questions. Oh, nobody comments, and I thought that was a really good answer. Come on, guys. Nobody coming in the answer. Am I talking bat poorly again? Am my audio messed up? Just thing on. Okay, so. It's been a busy day. I'm sorry. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Uh, let's see. I told you about that trip. Uh, those tires were horrible. When I saw that story, the number one comment on that story was about the tires, not about the frame bending. <laughs> people, people just <laughs> were talking about that tire too much. Would you love to see a bent trailer coupler arm if it was jumped? I don't see any damage on the trailer. Yeah, it. it I would. And uh, it, I said that it in one of the comments. I said it probably needs the different type of hookup, like you said, the the, the pencil or whatever. Um, but I, I also don't think that the rental company anticipated somebody off roading to that speed and to that degree as this Jeep Lander guy must have. To me, that's a pull behind like rental U-Haul. Where you just drive somewhere down dirt road and you park it in the field. And I'm curious what this guy actually went over. So there you go. Oh, thanks, Doss. I was, I don't know what's wrong with the audio tonight. I do apologize for that. I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, I think Electric could come out next year to compete with the GMC Hummer. They could speed it up. I heard, and I didn't get a chance to run this story either. It's all on vacation. The GMC Hummer will be a truck and an SUV. And Chevrolet is talking about doing their own. Uh, lower price point electric truck so those are big news items that i did not get a chance to cover hmm. well, my brother's calling should i answer my brother's phone no let's message him say sorry i can't talk right now i'll call him back later don't tell it <laughs> uh, what's interesting is the uh, that there's a trailer that i saw last year Name those guys. There's an off-road company. It's on this channel. They drive a Tundra and they drove a 
Land Cruiser, very similar trailer, and they took it off road, and so they have no problems with it. Never had any problems with it, but they drive like 15 to 25 miles an hour off road. They're not trying to boogie getting off road. They're taking their time, enjoying it. So yeah, I think that's uh, what's going on there. Oh, I have to answer my brother real fast. He's asking for a movie. If you guys have not seen the movie, Ford v. Ferrari is a, a great movie. And I told my dad and brother to watch it last week on vacation. Ford v. Ferrari. That is an amazing movie. Um, favorite whiskeys. Oh, uh, let's see. I like some Elijah Craig. I drink Crown. Usually mixed. Sometimes straight. Uh, I've been trying to find some Buffalo Trace. That's, I've had some Buffalo Trace lately. That's some really good stuff. I can't seem to find it here. Uh, uh, Pappy. Oh, I knew that. Pappy. Pappy. There's some Pappy stuff that's really good, too. I would have to say, um, I need to try the Buffalo Trace again and try that. But Buffalo, I, I would put that at number one. That Buffalo Trace was just really smooth. And you know you have a really good whiskey when it's really smooth. That's, yeah, definitely the, the really, really good whiskeys. Yeah, awesome. I, yeah, I was like, guys, why don't we watch the movie? You know, they wanted to watch Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy, some kind of BS like that. And I was like, dude, let's just watch the movie. And like, no, we're going to walk the dog. Got to do this, got to do that. No. You need to watch this darn movie. The movie is phenomenal. It's the best movie I've seen. I know there's critics who say that uh, there's things they messed up, facts they, whatever. It's Hollywood. Hollywood's going to do that with facts. That's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Uh, New Fort Bronco looks more awfully capable than New Land Rover Defender, and that's a major oof by Land Rover. Yeah, that Defender is... I don't know. Oh, yeah, I mean... All right, so pricing. We're back to pricing again. I would think that the Ford Bronco pricing was within a thousand bucks of the Jeep regular pricing in all trim levels. But what I find interesting about that four door Ford Bronco is nobody's talking like Forerunner. I know Ford Runner is longer, but Forerunner is pretty damn capable off road too, and nobody's saying it's competitor. It's always Jeep Wrangler, Ford Bronco. Jeep Wrangler, Ford Bronco. I don't know. I think if I was Toyota, I'd feel a little left out. Uh, yeah, so that was, that's my take on that. And if I was Nissan, I'd feel really left out because no Xterra, no nothing. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what I got by that. All right. Any other comments, concerns? Sorry, we're running out of steam. I've done four videos today. That's a lot. Lots of going on. And I have a lot more comments to get to and answer stuff. So let's wrap it up. Oh, Brandon, so... We talked a little bit about this earlier. Uh, no, I'm not because of coronavirus, because of the way the shows are. So New York's not a show I ever, ever go to. But there are concerns about media trips. So my media trip this week to drive the Chevy Trailblazer got canceled. Uh, Calic was supposed to do one this week. They got canceled. Buick's supposed to do one this week. They got canceled. So there are automakers making plans to cancel stuff. So that's, gonna, that's something that's... that's um, that's making some changes in the industry, and there's a lot of discussion of whether or not things are going to change moving forward. I'm doing one trip this month, and then that's it. I have nothing else on my calendar. And I'm really concerned about Tahoe, Yukon first drives. If GM's already canceling trips already, they may not be able to do those first drive trips. And I really want to do first drives. I want to talk to engineers. I want to really know more about those, those full size HVs, especially because they're so brain, they're so different. Uh, you know, a Z71 Tahoe. I mean, come on. I want to drive that, but there's questions about uh, coronavirus and there's questions about what's going to happen. So I'm hoping that nothing, I'm hoping just a blip in the radar and things go smoothly. Now, I am planning to be in Michigan this year. I actually have a, a trip kind of planned to Michigan in another month or so. There's supposed to be a Halifont Jeep Gladiator I'm going to go drive, and there's a million mile 2006 Chevy Duramax in Michigan. I may do two trips together. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot going on. I'm not cropping any video. Uh, Detroit is iffy for us. I do plan on going to Detroit as well. Uh, Bronco versus Wrangler before will be quite chilling. I think I think there's some thing. It does come back here looking like the off-road. If, if the uh, TRD Pro does. I think TRD Pro is pretty badass looking off-road. So yeah, so that's the update there. All right. I'm going to go sit in my easy chair and respond to comments. So, hey, thanks for everybody being on. Thanks for sharing your comments in the uh, super chat. I know TFL will do it first. Uh, Pathfinder, yes. Interesting. Um, all right, so uh, thanks for the super chats. 
Thanks for coming on. I gotta go take a seat because I am worn out. You guys have kicked my butt today. Ford has kicked my butt. I was thinking about sending them a thank you note for blowing up my channel today because they did an amazing job. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, oh, yeah, the Yukon does, but not Tahoe. I think that's how it works. Yeah. Anyway, and I'm gonna go sit and cheat. I'm gonna respond to comments. I'm telling you guys. Lots of energy going on. Thanks for being a part of the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Ta da for now. And I'll see you down the road. You know you're waiting for that. I know you were.